Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chenda. Chenda, how are you holding up? Great. I, I got some uh, well wishes. Apparently, you know, they really thought I was on Suicide Watch from the last uh, show that we did. But oh, you did have quite a day. It's very rare to see you riled up for real. Like you get riled up over like Spider-Man right. movies or I don't know, MCU. Is that the right whatever? And maybe sure. a football gets fumbled somewhere here and again. But, you know, it always like kind of lasts about 10 seconds and we enjoy it. But this this was a day. It it was beyond a day. And I realized my go to when I'm thinking and angry, I don't even finish a sentence. And I go, by the way, and then blah, blah, blah. By the way, there's a <laughs> there are like 52 by the ways I noticed you know, I was, when you I, when you reheard the show. Yeah, I <laughs> I was saw a story today. A 64 year old South Korean man lit himself on fire after an agency refused to arrange a marriage for him. Mm. Uh, let's see. He doused himself with gasoline, set himself uh, on fire because he didn't qualify for marriage to someone from another country because he had applied for a previous international marriage visa within the last last five years. I think it's kind of what happened to me. I go to this line, go to this line, paperwork. Pa- fuck it. Love is strong. Yeah. But we close. were talking about this in OMAT Club this week. Don't light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. Mm. So we learned not the best way to propose to someone because there are a couple <laughs> of logistical issues on that one minimum. It shows I love you so much. I set myself on fire. Uh, let's see. And it's two weeks until the Keith and the Girl Marathon show. We start the first Saturday of February. If you're behind on shows, that might be today. <laughs> Subscribe to the Keith and the Girl YouTube page. Hit the bell. We go live for 24 hours with over 50 guests. February 5th. All right. Uh, today's guest. She's appeared on PBS's Women in Comedy. Let's see what's going on with women in comedy nowadays. OK. <laughs> uh, Sex in the City. Do, 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 do. Uh, the new audio book. Big congrats on that. So you need to decide is out right now. We'll talk about that a little bit. Beth Lapidus, how you doing, Beth? I'm so well. Thank you so much for having me. But I also am now concerned about the suicide watch. But I'm good now. I needed a good 24 hours. Um, do you what uh, what phrase does something frustrate you? The, well, of course, something does. What uh, frustrates you the most? I was I was. I was having a day and it's just from uh, phone calls, dealing with businesses, trying to navigate something on the website. And it was just one thing after another. Oh, and I was I, ready to cry. In fact, I did. I'm so glad to hear that. Cry. You know that they had they did a study about crying where the different cryings, like whether it's over heartbreak or frustration or physical pain, they have actually different chemicals in the tears. Mm. And there's you know, they were able to track like the healing of crying for the different things. I mean, it's not all the same. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, you should start bottling it, telling it. But like bottling you know, your tears. <laughs> yeah. You know how like right now, uh, weed isn't the most legal in New York. It's kind of legal and oh, around true? And, and in the States. Yes, because federally it's always illegal. Right? right. So that means your dealer can drop something off and you go, what strain is that? And they go, um, sour diesel. You know, you could tell your tears like that. What strain is that? And it's like mm, mm-hmm. angry X, you know, at an email server. Yeah, you, you could yes. you could have cleaned the tub with my tears. <laughs> it was the, it was the you know, selling it my grit tears. to it. Selling yeah. my tears, <laughs> selling my tears. That's funny. We have a pot store around the corner that's called um, Med Men. OK, Med Men. oh, that's cute. Yeah. It's adorable. What's it mean? What does that mean? A oh, med like medicine, like mad men, you know, and right. like med like, yeah, your medicine. medicine. Yeah, yeah okay. your medicine. Right. Good yeah, for them. It's very L.A. We have one uh, little it, bags. There's one in a story called uh, coffee, coffee, something, but it's spelled like a cough, like. <laughs> 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 That's the anyway, best part of starting a shop. Frustrated. I, I get frustrated. So I, I feel like working on patients is I have that on my list for this year. Because it's sort of up to you when you get frustrated. It's it's not the thing. It's you. You know, the more we build our patients, you know, all that. It sounds like it's working. Yeah. You didn't even have patience with yourself to talk about the patient. I don't even have. Yeah, I don't even want to finish the sentence. Yeah. (laughs) Blah, 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 blah. Be more patient with me. (laughs) How are you? You have a very popular show, by the way, called uh, Uncabaret. (laughs) 
do i've had uh, patience with that that show's been running for like 400 years yeah right. but you're running the different kind of patient you're running with comedians that's like you know you're the doctor they're the patient yeah well ha yeah. uh, um i'm actually a lot of wordplay today welcome to the show hmm? well, i love it what's the <laughs> etymology um yeah do you do, how are you holding up during the pandemic do you go stir crazy do you, you're a performer you have a lot going on you had to put that show on hold i have to assume for a while uh we did not we pivoted. You didn't you don't we give pivoted. a fuck we nice. pivoted to zoom on march 17th right away oh, impressive yeah. we did not impressive. take a breath and i don't know what gave me the i think somebody said are you gonna do a benefit for something and i was like i don't know uh, and then I just was like, I don't know. We have to do shows. I don't know what it's going to be a benefit for. Maybe it's just shows. We have to do shows. Yeah, we have to keep going. And those shows have been such a godsend because it became such a community. We found all sort. you know, of course, we got out of the local thing. So we now it's an international situation. Right. And that was exciting. And I've always loved the talk. I mean, in some ways, the talk format is on cabaret. It's intimate and it's conversational it's talky comedy so it's been kind of perfect and it was just a lifesaver we went to hybrid over the summer where we were doing one show live and one zoom and now this month we're back to just zoom so the, tired of pivoting your uh your audio book uh it's called so you need to decide features we know a lot of these people baron vaughn a partner on chair josh gondelman you recognize alex edelman greg barrent um the I don't know, I just uh, my brain just broke. <laughs> my brain literally just broke <laughs> just now. Just the, the weight of those names just yeah. is too <laughs> heavy just on your brain. Them. <laughs> <laughs> this is let's blame COVID fog, right? Like right, we don't be, know. Right. We don't know when that time release fog will happen. <laughs> and we just saw it live with Keith. <laughs> right. Uh, so you talk about the small decisions that we make that affect bigger things that yeah. we don't think about too much. Yeah. Uh, give him the, an example, if you please. Um. You know, the decision to well, some of them are big decisions, the decision to leave a job, the decision to not have a baby today, the decision <laughs> to <laughs> the decision to finish something, to keep going on a piece of work, you know, to actually keep going just today on this piece of work, just the, the day by day, the who you're going to work with, the uh you know that we cover family we cover work we cover love we cover spirituality moving moving mm -hmm. well there's that whole concept of every time you say no to something you say yes to something else or every time you say yes to something you say no to something else so it's constant and the yeah. the more uh variety the more options you have sometimes the more pause you put because then it's overload well we we were living in a society of decision overwhelm i mean people have it's a thing called decision exhaustion and because the weight of should i go out should i see people should i get vaccinated i mean all those decisions on top of everything else that already was all the screen decisions all you know what we're listening to what we're, it's it's so much who to trust i mean we're living in a society where we're constantly so that's a serious part of it but um the word decision and the overwhelm also decision is related to the words suicide homicide all those side words decide the side part has a violent nature to it it comes from a word meaning to cut off so it in a way making a decision is a gift to yourself cutting off those other options and in some ways you have to let go and just be like a decision the decision to make decisions and not live in indecision is almost the greatest gift you can give yourself did you find yourself overwhelmed and that's what made you do this in the first place you know or it was just an angle no it was you know i wanted to do an audiobook i was attracted to the form in the same way you go like oh i want to do a podcast i mean i right. just I, and then I was like, I want to do a book where I can have conversation and I can also write. And the word decision was, do you ever get this thing where like a word is sort of pulsating for you, where you're just thinking about a, you know, a mm. phrase or a word? I haven't tried was, those mushrooms yet, but yeah. <laughs> I plan on it. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> it was about a year before the election. And, the, you know, they always have like decision 2020, sure. you know. And that word decision was really just sort of in my sights. And um, I thought that's like great. And then I very randomly titled it, you know, so you need to decide as a like temp title. But it wouldn't go away. Is it a nerve wracking time right now? The, the book uh, is out and your friends are reading it, but it, the audiobook takes a little bit so they can't get back to you so fast. Eight hours and a half. Takes yeah, eight hours and a half unless you listen on double speed and then you can listen much quicker. Yeah, I, I do it the right way. Do uh, <laughs> are you checking your phone like uh, every, I'm uh, checking my phone? I just got a nice message. People are I'm checking, you know, Amazon numbers. I'm checking. <laughs> I'm you know, that is a I would like to decide. I've decided and it hasn't stuck. Stop looking. Stop checking. It's out in the world. Partly. It's a decision to just release and let go, which is something which is a huge I'm always looking for the spiritual lesson. So the spiritual lesson and it is you, you've worked hard. You've done. I worked on it for two years. It's out. People have loved it. It's already been, you know, I've already gotten. I already know it is good. It's I'm what? proud of it and I could just release it. And let let's it try it. What vice do you use to help you release things? Oh, I, I'm in the you a wine category. person. What's mm -hmm. that? Wine, perhaps? No, I've, I, no. I haven't had a drink in um, in 11 and a half years. Wow. Yeah, I wow, made that amazing. decision. That's a decision I made. And that's a an underlying decision. And I, I yeah, 11 and a half years. So um, did, did police have to mat. make you do that decision? Or are you were able to do that on your own? I made it on my own, but uh, I've had help. <laughs> I was encouraged. I will tell you how I made the decision. Somebody invited me to go with them to a sober yoga class. And I said, that sounds like a meeting. And they said, <laughs> wait, are, it, are most yogas drunk? I didn't no, know that. That's what I said. I, I mean, assume. it just sounds like yoga. I mean, it's just like a regular yoga class, right? Just, and that, that's what he said to me. He said, no, it's just yoga. I was like, but sober yoga sounds like a meeting. And he said, no, no, it's not. And it's free. And it's at your favorite place. And I went Church downstairs. Church? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was at a place called City Yoga, which was my favorite yoga studio. And um, and then I thought, well, if it is, you know, he just needs me to go with him. And it was like a new relationship. And I was just like, oh, he just needs me to for him. Right. And um, do you look over during the during this meeting and like, so are you taking this in? And he's like, yeah, yeah okay. no, I, like I mean. I was I was just looking around the whole time going like this doesn't feel like a regular they handed me a piece of paper at the beginning like you're going to read this later and it was moving too fast and I'm like it's going to be over after an hour because you know where you are in the class right. and then I'm like but what's the other half hour and then you get in a circle and I'm like all right it is a meeting it is a meeting and I was like at the end I was like I well I'm not an alcoholic but you know I, I do like these people I like and that's this. when you decided I, I did decide. I no. Then after the class, it was like a few days. And then after the class, I said, was it an intervention? And he right. said, um, well, I don't know. Was it? And, Look at that. <laughs> and then the I next didn't know day, I could talk to my friends like that. Keith, you want to go for yogurt? Right. <laughs> it's sober yogurt. Neither sober hand yogurt. Hand. Yeah. Sober just, yogurt. I don't know why I need to say that. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I don't have to go, actually, but you should. Yeah, <laughs> and then I I went to pour a drink, and I was never like the you know, and this is a this is a very very timely because there was a lot of people, and especially women in this time of lockdown, who it's just like the cute like drinking a little too much wine, you know, it's three o'clock, is that too early? Oh my god, the kid, you know, there's a lot of like casual adorable drinking going on. And right. it seems okay. And I wasn't a never a blackout drinker. I was never. An, Were I, you a volleyball drinker? That's what Bud Light is. Just like volleyball drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing in my drunk. life is at yeah. all connected to volleyball. No, completely. Right. So you're a, you were a vodka yoga drinker. drinker. Those are different commercials. Those, yeah. <laughs> So, what was your there's, a, there's there's an alcohol that like where you fall in love with the ice cube in your cup. Are you like that right. kind of <laughs> <laughs> is that one That's funny? I was like a very sophisticated. I liked I loved a Campari, a Campari with a little like I loved a Negroni, um, but I loved it at five o'clock every day at the end. Right. You know, I loved it every day. And that's not that's a dependency. That's not freedom. 
that's not freedom. So my decision is always looking for freedom. You know, how can I be more free? I don't know that's not like chit chatty, but that's the truth. How can I be more free? How can I help other people be more free? How can I be inspired? These underlying values. And, um, you know, when I went to pour a drink after that first trick meeting, um, <laughs> so great. <laughs> Would you I, be able to use the tools from that trick meeting? Like what part can trick us into like, you know, not overeating, not over drinking, not doing bad things for ourselves? What stuck with you? Well, from that meeting, it was this decision that I'm mean, partly it's the serenity prayer, you know, mm. which everybody knows and is a great guideline for all of life. You know, accept the things I cannot change have the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And if you just look at your life with those three lines, it's so helpful because so much of life is us trying to change what isn't ours to change, which means that we're not focused on changing the things we should be changing, which is, our, you know, what you can change is yourself. And you can work to affect change in the world. I mean, on Cabaret, I work to affect change within the comedy community. You can work to affect social change, but your attitude, what you, you know, so that wisdom to know the difference, um, Is that's one tool. There's so many tools, you know, suit up and show up, but also take it easy. The, the, how those two things go together. Um, I didn't go learn big or anything go home. in that first meeting. I was just, <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Go big or go home. I'm taking go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you did your did you tell your friend like I'm gonna quit, but I'm not an alcoholic? And he's like, I guess close enough. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it took me a long time. It takes it's you know that for the first step in the program is I mean I'm breaking my and whatever, but just between the two of us, sure. Um, sure. you know you that first step where you admit it can take people three years. It can take you know it can take a long time to work at the beginning of that program. Were you able to do that knowing you're not an alcoholic? Knowing I'm not an alcoholic, it was tough. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I don't have to do all these. <laughs> not all of it. Just I'll start with step 11. I can right. skip advanced <laughs> AP, AP uh, alcoholism. I'm sure they love when you do that and then talk about it in public. <laughs> right. I, I'm a three, six, nine kind of guy. So <laughs> you can start at, that was step 11. I mean, step 11 is, you know, is, um, you know, a prime number. Sure. Is, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I've worked all the steps. The stuff it's a it's a miraculous program because it's about shifting your perspective and shifting your perspective is always amazing. You know, if you in some ways, what I've really come to realize over COVID is growing up is about being loving yourself more, but being less selfish. Like, that's what I feel like the huge lesson for all of like the world that we have to get is and it's it hasn't happened yet. That's when it that's when that's when it goes away. Is when uh, you should have warned me I needed to smoke more for this. <laughs> This is, if we were going to do a sharing circle of feelings Can you and imagine healings, what I was like yes. when I wasn't sober. <laughs> did, you, did you feel you had to make any amends to anybody? And then do you say, hey, I want to say sorry, but not a big deal. You know, I feel like I need to make an amends for this show right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, our amends version is like, quick, tell an embarrassing story about yourself or, you know, we could just let it go and live in the past. Which one would you like? <laughs> I'll try to think of something as we go. I don't think right. my embarrassing stories right up top, but I'm sure I'll think of something as maybe as... if we pretend it's a fake meeting, then you'll be like, <laughs> and now it's your turn. I'll time you. I'll let you know when you have one minute. We I... share in a general way. <laughs> I'm picturing somebody listening there. They know they're an alcoholic deep down. They're like, I'm thinking, uh, should I go? It's tough to go. I don't know. And there's a uh, Beth like, I don't even have a problem. And I go, <laughs> I had a problem. I mean, it just takes you a long time to see, see the problem, you know, but I'll I knew the next day. I mean, I actually I poured a drink. The I went to pour a drink the next day because I still wasn't really in. And I held the drink and I was like, I have to, I really wanted it. Like I was like, I want this drink. And then I just thought I have to want something more than I want this drink. And I just had this really visual image that there's like this drink. And then there's something behind this drink that this drink is getting in the way of. That was my, that was a light bulb moment for me. And then yeah. I just was like, I'll give it a year. 
And after, I figured in a year, well, that'll do it. And then after a year, you're like completely falling apart. And, you know, <laughs> and it takes a year to, it took a year to fall apart. And then it takes a while to put it together. What, what is it with that? I'm not trying to get you to say it, but what is it yeah. with that word that you, that uh, you, you, you seem to stay away from the word alcoholic? What would be the difference? Oh, no, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe I, I just, you know, in some ways I do stay away from the word because for one thing, that's one substance. And I think that, um, and it's, it was a substance that was a problem for me and was standing in the way, but it's a way of thinking. I mean, before I quit alcohol, I quit pot, you know, pot was, that was standing in the way of drink. And then once you take away alcohol, you're like, oh, well, I'm using sugar. Oh, well, you know, it's like anything that you use in, it's an addictive behavior. I think, I don't know anybody that wouldn't benefit from looking at their addictive, you know, behaviors. Um, at their stinking thinking. At the stinking thinking. It sounds like you might have been to a meeting or two. <laughs> <laughs> What does thinking thinking mean? I've never heard that. <laughs> it's not the drinking, it's the thinking. The the idea is that it's not the, the particular substance, it's the way that you think. And part of the thinking is selfish thinking and out of proportion thinking and negative thinking. Um, I had somebody once tell me, you know, you're such a, you're so... <laughs> you're so positive for a negative person <laughs> <laughs> or was it you're so negative for a positive person i'm like no i'm not no i'm not uh, you can, you're um, allowed to drink though when you're working on the book right because that's you know there's a lot of pressure there oh yeah i took a i put a pin in my sobriety for <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh consecutive days no <laughs> No, I mean, that's one of the things is the clarity of, you you know, seeking clarity. Clarity is a gift you give yourself. Um, sure, but I, I get why pe some people don't want clarity. Sometimes the clarity that you get is a big punch in the face that you have to deal with. Yeah. Where right now it's behind a door that you have behind duct tape. I mean, sometimes it takes a long time because you have to peek at it before you really look at it. It's scary shit. It's scary shit. I mean, I had, uh, you know, for me, a lot of it was not wanting to feel the feelings and you know, I like like yourself, you know, I love a word play and I love, you know, ideas and um, and I didn't necessarily want to have the feelings and I didn't even know what some of the feelings were. And it took me I cried for like two years when I got sober. And that's I'm actually probably that's an underestimation. I just feeling all the feelings once you stop, it's like all the stuff that you've been going like that to. It's pushing Sho down. shoving down. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming. And you have to be I have to say you have to be kind of brave. You have to be willing to. And you ha you need people around you learning tax for help, learning to be connected. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, but you need now, people I, to be able to say it's going to be over. You thank know, you for saying all of that. I'm a little concerned because Keith usually doesn't listen this intently. And I think he's tricking us into having a fake AA meeting so he doesn't have to go to one. This <laughs> is saving me time. I appreciate it. You know what? Any meeting of two <laughs> uh, is a meeting. <laughs> I'm here if anybody needs to call or text if you're listening and you need support. Well, uh, guys, this is an open AA meeting officially. Um, <laughs> I'm now going to tell you my experience, strength and hope, uh, what it was like, what happened and what it's like now. Um, who's the timer for this meeting? Could somebody I'll please? be the timer? OK, thank you. Can you give me a 10, a five and a one? Absolutely. You know what? Fuck it. Give me a 15, 10, a five and a one. I know that's too much. But this morning in the shower, I agreed that it's going to be OK for me to ask for that today. When I speak. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I love what? you. I love this show. I Hi, I'm it. Hemda. I'm a grateful member of this program. Uh, thank you for asking me to speak. Thank you to everyone who's doing service here today. Uh, thank you to the timekeeper. And you know what? I'm actually really nervous and I'm not, um, you know, I, 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 it's not that I usually have trouble talking, but today I need a minute. So I'm going to, if we could just all unmute and do the serenity prayer together so I can collect my thoughts and just make sure everything's okay. Here we go. All right. You ever have to any <laughs> of you ever great. have to ever mm -hmm. tell somebody their time is off, but they're telling the most horrendous story of their life. Mm -hmm. and, and then my dad raped me. OK, two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm going to kill myself. Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> yeah. You're flashing uh, too. You know, everyone in like uh, everyone in the meetings is scared to time because, uh, well, at least in Al-Anon meetings, I don't know, in AA meetings, you might like that 
power for a second. We don't enjoy it. Mm. I, I do it so that I can make sure that uh, I can draw a boundary. I'm like, uh, this is my job. So I'm allowed to tell you there's only one minute left, even though you just told me that your mother died and you cried all night. OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I was at one and looking back, this dude's probably trying to help me the same way. But I think I'm just going for him. Like I could use some company tonight. You know, this alcoholic is saying to me, uh, my roommate or yeah, my roommate. And and then we went and he told a story. And then uh, this guy goes, uh, you know, thanks for sharing. And I'm like, I was so mad. I'm like, fuck you. It really sounds fake, right? Uh, thanks for sharing. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, they're assholes. <laughs> it's interesting. You can go into a meeting and decide that everything is sarcastic. You yeah. will want to punch everybody in the face. It's like, and that's when I thought it was the worst. All right. Thanks for sharing. It's time for a business meeting because this is the first of the month. Um, does anyone have anything to share that's uh, related? <laughs> Can you time this person who's talking about their dead father, please? Please. They're going on and on. Honestly, after three minutes, we all repeat ourselves. Well, I'm the secretary and the treasurer of the meeting. And I want to say that our uh, we were doing well financially. We don't have rent on a space anymore. Thank you for your contributions. And Venmo me at Beth Lapidus. <laughs> do you live with others, Beth? I do live with another. Yeah. What's going on there? Um, he's music on words. Okay. Together we make everything. He did the music wow. for the book. Oh, cool. He's That's music, it's very good. I'm words. <laughs> that sounds like a connection, huh? That's pretty great, right? Wow. Yeah. Were you were you um I don't know what the word is, uh tough to live with or anything like that during the making of this book? Or was that uh, that didn't get in oh. the way? Because it's pressure. Keith is projecting he's the worst when he's I could, I can how picture about you? me. I can picture me uh, not being too easy. You yeah. know, it's interesting um, at the very end when I was recording, which was probably the most pressure because I was recording and doing sort of final rewrites and it was a very intense week. He was on the road. OK, so we did not. So and that's probably the bit for the best, really, uh, for him. And um, yeah, maybe your managers and agents got together and go put him on the road. Let yes, him finish the book. Perfect. Right. We got this. That's what they're really managing. We always wonder what the difference between a manager and agent is. And they, it's just for them to decide where your partner needs to be at what time in your career. <laughs> <laughs> I need you around all the time. Um, <laughs> there's yeah, you know, I think so. I think. No, I think the hardest is when we do uncab and then we're both working on the same thing and both there to support each other. But, you know, we're responsible for different things. We need a, probably a third. We need another person there when we're, we're navigating our own creativity. I think the nice thing about living with another creative person is they get it and they know and they can give you space. They get it. But it's when we're both working on stuff. I think. Yeah. And I worked on this book for so long. My God. No, no hassle. Like he's like, play the whole song in the book. And it's like, they get the gist. This is enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wrote specific things for the book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we went, uh, he wrote a lot. And then we sort of sifted through and picked the best together. And then we recorded. The recording was really fun. That I, I mean, it's been, I, I never sang till I was with him. And, uh, that's been a gift. So you guys, uh, you haven't sang be before before you met. I, his sang, music. I tried to. I did sing, but I was told not to. OK, <laughs> oh. but he started. Talking, he's given me voice lessons and we've written songs together. So the song that I sing at the beginning of every uncab, which is called Change, we wrote together and I really did. I mean, I learned to sing for a comedian. I would never say I'm a singer, but I sing well enough to sing in public and have some people say, oh, that was great. OK. I'm reading a, a story here. A man from Mexico donated the organ, uh, donated a, a a heart. What the fuck? Oh, kidney. OK, <laughs> you can't <laughs> donate a heart, right? Uh, a man from Mexico donated a kidney uh, to his girlfriend's mom, only to be dumped uh, fairly immediately. Wow. Oh, mean. Ooh. Oh. His uh, his former partner ditched him and married another guy just weeks after the surgery, which saved the mom's life. Uh, mm. OK, it's heartbreaking, but he has to say if she's a person who would do that, how glad am I to not be with her? I mean, but she sure. did do it. and You're missing a kidney. It also, already happened. That's a bad decision. That's like 
<laughs> We're skipping a couple of feeling steps before we go to. Yep, I'm better in the future. Ten years from now, this other guy will be very upset. I'm Good to know you're someone to who would do that. Lining too fast. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. For right but- now, hopefully he's crying at some kind of I got my kidney stole meeting. You know, uh, here's Man. what it's like. Uh, and also, I think uh, maybe his mom should marry him. Who's that girl? Who's that? Girl? <laughs> Who's the girl who does that? <laughs> like she's collecting organs from different guys. I mean, and my uncle, the uncle's like, can you go on. out and date? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me tell you about this, please. Manscaped. It's 2022. New year, new you. Uh, I'm reading here. Hey, did, don't you have a resolution to uh, a resolution for nicer balls? Anyway, I do use Manscaped. Uh, I'm a big fan. And, uh, you know, the, I, I buzz and my girlfriend's like, oh, that is fucking beautiful. And I go, thank you. And then we get it on. And I have a confession. So, yes. Uh, Xerxes has a manscaper. Yes. And my apparently lady scaper. I don't know. Uh, my right. my scaper uh, right. fucked up so hard that it got stuck while I was scaping. Mm. And, oh, I was like, and it's just hanging there. A razor's just hanging out. I have of her to garden. hold it because if it's <laughs> hanging, it's going to hurt. And I held it there and it was in the spot that I can't see. And I'm like, how long do you hold it here before you call your boyfriend? One oh. Mississippi, two Mississippi. I'm like, fuck this. And then I go, I get it out and I go in for another one. And I'm like, well, this was a mistake. OK, so I thought it was maybe my angle. I am horrified. I was there for probably a minute, which I think is a long time when you're holding that. Yeah. So then so he's like, why don't you use my manscaper? I'm like, is that allowed? Don't tell anyone. (laughs) I'm not a man. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. Okay. All right. This whole time I was secretly or maybe not so secretly. Maybe I was hinting that that light on the manscaper. Yeah, the 4000 K LED light. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, are you going into a cave? Are you like in a do you need like a headlamp or whatever? Oh, my God, I was missing stuff. Okay. first of all, the ease of the slide. I'm like, oh, you could just take care off. That's nice. Don't have to think about it. Nothing's getting anywhere. Okay, great. Now, the other thing is like, I guess I'm done. And I look down a little and that light is shining. What the shadow had me miss. So I was spotting mm. some weird, you know, like when you miss like the, the random sure. sprout thing, this illuminates that random stuff that makes you look like an idiot. Right. So. All right. Vagina. So you're balls. saying the manscaper is the new boyfriend jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I saw I saw somebody <laughs> with the ball patches down there. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I think you're mentally challenged. I can't I can't do this. This feels wrong. <laughs> That's the thing. The patches. It's so easy to get patches and that light will be like. Uh, uh, uh. Right. Uh, waterproof. Uh, yeah, you do know, they sponsor every... your show. Man's no, camera. I just love it so much. Here's what you do. Get 20 percent off and free shipping with code KATG20 two zero. One word KTG20 at Manscaped with a D dot com. That's 20 percent off with free shipping at Manscaped dot com. Take a look around. Be sure to use code KTG20. It's a new year, new year. No, no pubes. They wrote My that balls have never looked better. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, balls that feel better, get more attention. That's just a little tip between me and you. Did you uh, happen to come across anybody? The the West Virginia news guy, he was on the he's on the news um, and he's talking to somebody about weather. And, you know, we're not going to understand weather unless I see you on the street. And the woman got hit with the car. and. He is so matter of fact, like if he doesn't show concern, you know, nobody will hold on. Just wash over. What happened? The weather guy was reporting the weather out on the street. A woman. But yes. Oh, pardon. They can be women. A weather person was standing on the street and saying the weather and somebody else got hit by a car. No, she got hit by the car. And then she was pretending like she wasn't hit by a car. And then she's trying to uh, make it look to the news guy in the studio like it's not a big deal because the news guy is acting like it's not a big deal. And now we're starting to experience, unfortunately, in freeze thaw, we see this water main breaks. Just got hit. And, and, and the guy just okay, said, so I just got hit by a car, but I'm okay, Tim. That's the first um, 40 okay. on TV, Tori. 
We're all good. I'm okay. Yeah, you know, that's live TV for you. It's all good. I actually got hit by a car in college, too, just like that. <laughs> wow. I am so glad I'm okay. Yeah. You're okay. You're okay. We're all good. This is all. Uh... Oh, she must not have insurance. Ow. <laughs> that's that's a don't call the ambulance for me. You know, it'll cost me a thousand dollars. That's the only time I was like, I'm OK is when I'm like, please don't charge me for me falling. Now, when you have insurance, it's like, fuck, this hurts. Somebody call everybody. Tell them to pick right. me up and get me into a thing that fixes me. I like that perspective. I was thinking it was a woman just desperate to keep her job. Just oh, no, like, you're right. Yeah. It's just like, no. oh, no, you know what? Anything could happen. And I'll just keep going. Don't <laughs> fire me. Don't. I can't leave for five minutes. They'll just fill in with some other guy. Some guy. Some right. guy will get it. <laughs> Women can do what men can do. And I'm fine. Yeah. It's uh, one sure woman. Okay, We're good, Tim. Man, you, sure okay? you are so sweet and you are okay. So it is all good. <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> Can we oh, cut? Dude. Right. So you, Give her a minute. You know, it's my last week on the job, and I think this would happen. So you were bumped in, to me, Tim. Were you bumped down low, Tori, or were you hit up high? I couldn't really tell from That's the your question? Oh. Yeah. I, I I don't even do you know if I was bumped down low or up high, sir? I just saw you disappear. I don't even know. I don't even know, Tim. I I'm my whole cry, life Tim. just flashed before my eyes. Oh, but this happen. is live TV and everything's okay. I I thought I was in a safe spot, but clearly um we might need to move the camera over a bit. Yeah. So let me do yeah, that. Do that. Well, You're in, now, to, just to set oh, the stage you for know? you, once again, Tori's in an area right now where there's been a water main break. So there are emergency vehicles around there. And a lot of times what we have seen in those kind of situations yeah. are crying with emergency a fake vehicles smile. are around. There's a lot of confusion from people about drivers, about, about where to yeah. go. So it's possible. People get distracted a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, you didn't even see. Oh, the God, that woman. That That's it. Oh, my God. Who's in charge of camera two? Right. <laughs> What's happening? Right. What if somebody says the word fuck, they cut real quick. Yeah. Real quick. They know how to press buttons when it's that. Some of they're like, keep this on. She said she's OK. This is this is real news. This is happening. Wow. Well, there's a severe weather Boys. alert. In other news, a woman was ran over by a car. Let's go. To that story right now. Hello, you again. Oh, that's crazy, Tim. I'm good. Meatloaf, the singer, died today. Why do you segue like that? What is and you add to that? (laughs) Give people a breath. Okay, let's start over. All right. That woman's okay. (laughs) She's not okay. Meatloaf is not okay. I feel that woman speaks for the whole world right now. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> oh, God, I couldn't be better. It's actually a blessing. Oh, it shows you that every day's precious. Tim. It shows you that I every know. day's a gift. And I got COVID. Do I get hit by by Omicron or <laughs> Delta? I can't even tell. Don't worry about it. Though. It's OK. We're fine. <laughs> Uh, really, quarantine's good. It's great. We got to nest. Every anxiety. Day, right? What are you talking about? I'm fine. Fine. I was gonna. Le- I was gonna leave this job tomorrow anyway. Uh, That's well, the killer. You know, leaving yeah. anyway tomorrow. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's my final week. I knew this would happen. Nothing could just be good, but that's right. okay. That's what we're learning. Watched, she's watched all those shows where the cops are like, the opening scene is like, well, I'm retiring in a week. And you're like, oh, well, I guess you'll die. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's like a, the main, that's like such a like hacky. And, she's like, I'm living a hacky premise right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you segue to meet love. Do you think because, and, Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for asking this, but it's okay. Do you think that diners are doing better today? Like people are ordering the meat. Uh, I, oh. I can see ordering that. You know, right? I, yeah. Aww. Yeah. Like an ode to, you know, you don't. I don't know how many people are making meatloaf anymore at home, but maybe that's also ground beef might be up in sales. I don't know. But, you know, Keith eats still a lobster roll when uh, a close friend dies or, mm. you know, oh. like a little ode. Meatloaf. What do you think, Keith? You have a meatloaf tonight? Well, here's the thing. He but got his won't do that. <laughs> Sorry. OK, it was going to come out. <laughs> do, you, do you know what uh, do you know what that is? You know, I would do anything for love. But I no, won't do, that. do you do we yeah. get to know now? Yeah, he won't put the dish dishes in the dishwasher like a bitch. He'll do it however he wants. You're the worst. Yeah, you're the worst. <laughs> you're legit you're excited. Worst. That was. I really want to know. What is it? I don't you know. He love? won't care too much. I don't know. 
I don't know. I feel like I, it's anal, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in him, uh, his meatloaf came from some story with him and uh, friends, and he was willing to put his head on the ground and a car run over his head. And they're like, you're stupid, like a meatloaf. And there, there's the uh, origin story. Wow. So oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that instead of eating meatloaf. Oh, so so we know it's not putting his head on the ground, having a wheel go over it because he will do that. He'll do that even. OK, what the fuck will this guy do? Yeah, yeah. I'm did gonna he say, do it? Did he did do he? it? Yeah, supposedly he did do that. The car did. How run can over you live head. through that? That's how it's you write a, great songs. It's kind of a misshapen head and the songs are good. <laughs> His head is like a meal. That's not right. possible. That, that's a myth. <laughs> if, I don't know if you ever heard the song Life is a Lemon that he did. Life is a lemon and I want my money back. It's like eight minutes because he's, you know, he's half Broadway. I, it's uh, fantastic. Do yourself a favor and listen to that today. Uh, Bad out of hell, of course. And, you know, you'd be a teenager. Listen to this and you're like, oh, they're having sex in a car. Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. Rocky Horror, of course, he was in. He was in Fight Club, Wayne's World, Spice World. Mm. Leap of Faith. I think he played like a bus driver in all of this. Uh, <laughs> he's a real good bus driver. <laughs> he legit could could run one. So they hired him. Uh, but yeah, he. Uh, he passed away and oh, I was in a show with him. I just remembered. Oh, yeah. Comedy Central. When I was on with Jeff Ross about his little penis, Meatloaf right. was the headliner. He was not happy with the front speakers. Oh, no. Mm. Was he out of line or was he correct? I think he was just a professional, maybe a little okay. agitated, but he was pro enough from what I remember. But listen back to the shows. I might have thought different. It's been decades. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also passed away. Louis Anderson, the comedian. Mm, yeah, they really do die in their 17s, don't they? The threes. Uh, they really, oh, yeah. It's really really yeah. like a, you make up what three you want and then <laughs> they die. I think in it's threes. I think it's three a day or something or three a right. week. Yeah. What did Louis Anderson die of? Uh, too many salads, I think. Let's see. Uh, 68 Jeez. years old. I'm not oh, sure. Is that very old? young. That's young, right? He was in uh, Coming to America, of course. Right. This year, it's the fries. Next year, I'm going to make manager. Before you know it, right. I'm going to have my own McDowell's. Uh, Family Feud. He ran that for a little bit. I get to kiss you now because that's what the other guy did. And show me I get to kiss you. Well, actually, people, you know, he's one of the celebrities that people can't help but guess. Uh, are you gay? And you're not uh, telling us. In 1997, he was blackmailed by a man named Richard John Gordon. Gordon demanded money from Anderson, threatening to reveal to tabloids that Anderson reportedly sexually propositioned him in a casino in 93. Between 87 and 98, excuse me, between 97 and 98, Anderson paid Gordon one hundred thousand dollars in hush money. No. Fearing this story would threaten his starring roles in two family oriented series. But when Gordon's demands increased to two hundred fifty thousand, Anderson's lawyer informed federal authorities. Can you go back like now? I'm going to turn you in now. One hundred fifty thousand. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Did that guy high. get in trouble? Uh, he was arrested after leading FBI on a high speed chase <gasps> wow. along the Santa Monica oh. Boulevard. He was fined and sentenced to 21 months in prison. Wow. Louis Anderson likes the bad boys. Oh, no. Well, do you remember, you know, the comedian Tom Rhodes? He called into our, our show before if he wasn't in person. He says that Louis Anderson sexually assaulted him when he was 19. Oh, no. Yeah. You should have let us react to the first thing first. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Start with that. I'm going to tell Seriously. you that uh, this celebrity is a bad person. Here we go. He passed no. away. Let me let me think. Oh, no, for a second. Right. What a what a terrible thing that we allowed for people to be bribed at, like that, that we that we could ruin someone's right. career, that they don't get a part because in their private life, they like something. That's what a crazy, crazy thing to, to be in the closet about. I hope. God, I, I hope like we've come just, a little ways, a little ways, a little ways. But we still need we still need safe spaces for people who need to come out to their families. And we still yeah. uh, it's still a little taboo and it's still OK. You could be that. But in your house, don't shove your 
lifestyle in my face sort of things. There's still that. And also it's less, like, but maybe you could be doing an adult show that's like on HBO, but not a family. You know, it's like, OK, fine, you're out, but not you can't be out in a family show. There's more right. family stuff now. I think about it. Um, uh, there's more like general. There's not as much stereotyping, but it still, of course, exists. It all exists for females, for people of color. Fear like of it's still, is it's not fear there. of difference, you know, more than anything. Yeah, else. Keith. Are you <laughs> mad at Keith? <laughs> <laughs> Keith, that's your role now, right? Fuck you, Keith. I'll take it. I'll take it. I understand the if world's overwhelming. Gonna- yeah, if you're going to say fuck you, at least at him so that <laughs> he gets the follows. So here's what you want to do. You want to download the audio book. So you need to decide. OK, Beth worked hard on this. Stayed sober. For you. <laughs> Enjoy it. It's a good I have to say, even if not for me, just for the. I mean, besides the people you've mentioned, also Bob Odenkirk, also Tim Bagley, mm. also uh, Phoebe Bridgers, who some of your viewers might know, huge rock star, Sandra Bernhard. There's some, just the stories are Julia Sweeney, just so many great conversations. Isaac Mizrahi. So it's called So You Need to Decide. So You Need to Decide. No and- comma. We, that was a big debate. Should we put the comma in the... Title. Keith appreciates that. I do. I appreciate yeah. that. We left the title. The we left the comma the out. It was just we just felt it was too. I just thought you don't need the comma. People, it's like understood. Keith, are you comfortable with that? I like. I like the no comma. It would have been after okay. the so. Yeah, and that sounds pretentious. I like. I thought choice. so. Thank you. Yeah, I feel good. It is a You're very big. People. We have argued about grammar. How many exclamation points are you allowed at the end of a sentence? Beth, mm. please. I, I I exceed my limitation so okay. frequently. I put three and then I say, no, Beth, take all of them away. And then <laughs> I take them all away and then I put one and then I think it's not enough. And I put two and I take them all away. This the, the decision around. <laughs> oh, uh, boy, you need this book. Beth. Let, me t- right. let me tell you about this book I know about. Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's one. I feel like now if you write an email and it has, especially for women, I feel if you write an email and it has no exclamation points, people are like, did she really mean it? I mean, you said you like it. <laughs> right. There's not one exclamation point. <laughs> I, it's, uh, it's one exclamation point. You could be artsy and add three. But when you add more to that, it really shows mental decline. Oh, yeah. More than three is <laughs> yeah, like, you're a psychopath. Mental decline. And there's something wrong with two. You know how when you're making a flower arrangement, it should be like three flowers or five flowers, mm-hmm. odd numbers. I feel the same about exclamation yeah. points. Wow. You hit it. That's that's where that's Keith. Correct. Uh, I, when I when I use two exclamation points, I know that Keith is cringing. Yeah, so, it's silly because it's like you're already bim bam. You need the boom. You can't have the bim and the bam without right. the boom. It's like yeah. leaving the punchline out. Yeah, I'm looking at the BAM and I'm like, no, I heard it with the BIM. Yeah. But now you give me a boom. You're making a fucking point. If one is like just a one liner, it's just like. Yeah. But then. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're in agreement on this. I like this. I like it. And you can tell the grammar is good, even though it's uh, an audio book. What about a winky face with the semicolon and the smile? It's not in my favorite books. I'm looking at my bookshelf now. I don't think many have that in there. <laughs> Even Andy Rooney didn't use that. What about emoji? Do you use the emojis in your texting or not? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use emojis. I, I don't mind. What are, using what's in your favorites? Text. Like, what are your favorite emojis? Mine's a heart because I'm a basic. Which color? Nice person. <laughs> what color? Uh, shit. Red. Black. There's so much <laughs> scrolling in other things. <laughs> Please, you know, take it for a classic. Work. You know, look, look, the red heart is a, is a classic. What about the upside down smiley face? I love that one. We call that a frown. <laughs> <laughs> you're such you know, a positive the whole person. Face is turned around the whole <laughs> face <laughs> like you're in a headstand. That's a good one. Things are crazy. You know, uh, Kyle, she's it's like she was 70 years old for a while. She didn't understand what these uh, what these texts like, what these emojis meant and like the eggplant, so, you just kept sending her eggplants. Yeah, and she was like, like oh, I, I made you eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want lasagna? What is your problem? Eggplant and peach. Those don't go together yeah. at all. <laughs> God, 
like uh, somebody will come over to her gym and, you know, the, somebody else, you know, a guy was at the front desk. And he's like, hey, this this guy's here. And she wrote, send them up uh, blush face with hearts on it. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> OK, oh, she doesn't know what that <laughs> yeah. means. I get right. it. OK, go, go ahead, girl. It's the only thing that makes sense, right? <laughs> Just tell him you're 70. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, follow Beth uh, online. Instagram is Beth underscore Lapidus. L-A-P-I. That's the worst decision I ever made, by the way. Beth uh, underscore. underscore Lapidus. I like uh. it. It gives me time to think. All right. You know, oh my uh, God, you, just, you just helped me so much. Thank you. Bless you. Uh, the audio book. So you need to decide you get that. On Cabaret Zoom editions, the next show is January 23rd. That's Sunday. It's Sunday. And she happens to have a rating workshop if you're into that. What's a rating workshop like when you're, do you do you ever meet somebody where like I can't save them? It's almost cruel to take their money. Does that ever happen? In my years of teaching, it has happened maybe twice. Very, okay. very infrequently. And I don't, I would say never, because I don't know, you know, it's not for me to say what people are getting out of it. You know, some people don't want to be perfect. Some people come because, and and they come at a high level and they want to get higher. Some people come and just want to like be a better person and they just want to know what they're thinking. So, uh, you know, that's not for me to say. Some people just want to be around creative people. So no, I don't, I never think it's cruel to take anyone's money. There you go. And Beth That's will a take a great idea to just take a class to be around the people you want to be around, whether you're good at it or not. That's beautiful. oh yeah, I have people right. doing that. And I yeah. have to say, I've seen really beautiful friendships form in this class. Um, it's really, I mean, that's one. Of, it's very nice as a teacher to see your students spark to each other and become friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely. And if you're so, and if you've been rating the two exclamation points out there running around like you're looking like an idiot, people uh, think about the other things you're doing. You might need a class. <laughs> you might I need a heard. class. You might need a class. There might be a, the all, problem isn't just two exclamation points. The problem is you're using 17 exclamation points. There's other shit going on. All right. Let her figure it out. People need deadlines, too. I mean, look, you do the show. You do five days a week, right? Are you on five days a week? In a sense. OK, well, you do it a lot. Yes, let's just say. And you know what the you know what it means to have a deadline and to show up for other people. And that right. is one thing that people who are even. Do you, to- Keith? Just get out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I'm going to a management class tonight. You want to come? <laughs> You're fine. I need I need help. Why don't you sit up front? Learn about lists. <laughs> Can I copy your notes after? Just right. take some. <laughs> what did you learn today? <laughs> right. Also, Keith, where spe- can they get my book, by the way? Say they wanted to get, get it anywhere. Uh, there's audio books. Thank you. Anywhere. Anywhere. That's, yeah. What well, you have a place you like? Visit it. Oh, we don't speak to our audience like that, because when we say audio book, they go, huh, I know where to get an audio book. Yeah. <laughs> where audio books can be found. I, that, thank you. Well, you must have a very smart <laughs> audience, right? People say to me, all the, well, where do I get it? I'm like, you get it everywhere. Just go where you get your fucking. Yeah. Can I Google that for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a CVS. I, I'm just kidding. Uh, you get it from uh, where you get audio books. Can I, hold your hand you. through I didn't mean screen. to have an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sign up to OMAT one minute at a time. Did you hear some uh, some clever little sayings today that you like? That's what I get out of OMAT. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. Uh, Join me on Monday. How about that? Be a better person. Be a person you actually like. If you backed our Kickstarter campaign, you have a free week to check it out. Uh, Use the link that we sent to you and we'll see you on Monday. Beth, very nice meeting you. Thank you so much for your time. So nice to be here was fun. And I I, I love you both for having me. And thank you. Geekandthegirl.com.